Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we're looking at the bizarre modern reality of Simpson fans. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I meant the Simpsons. That that's a slip of the tongue. It's not like I've seen the previous video of Super High Patch Wolf Day with similar titles, and it's not so much the show they're checking out as the entire fandom surrounding it and how it has morphed into some kind of non-Euclidean mass of Cthulhu. It always goes Cthulhu. I do not know why, but it always goes to Cthulhu. So I don't really know if I'm getting into other than probably Cthulhu, but otherwise, you guys know the deal. Link below video. Hit it up. Let's get started. There is a mobile game called The Simpsons Tapped Out. That's an actual game. And as a mobile game, there's oh. nothing that special about it. You tap the screen and build your miniature Springfield and slowly fill it with miniature Springfieldians. I hate how much mini Springfield themed Sim City actually kind of looks fun. It's stupid, it's small. But this actually kind of looks like a fun game. All the while, the game funneling you down a carefully constructed rat's maze of timed meters, steadily depleting premium currency, and gambling mechanics that are just subtle enough that you won't notice as they begin to pound on those soft, squishy dopamine glands. Ah, yeah, I've just added myself as a gotcha fan. Uh, I am the target audience for this, damn it. And I kind of hate this game. Yeah. It's insidious in the way- Wait, did it just say, isn't that gambling? They actually call themselves out in the game itself? Nonsense, Lisa. You can't lose in a social game. Oh, it's self-aware. That's even worse. It's insidious in the way a lot of mobile games are, and so why even talk about it? Well, that's because it's helped me answer a question I've been thinking about for a while now. Calling it now that the Simpsons became a money grab, and this is a money grab, yeah. Why? Money! Why is the Simpsons still going? The Simpsons is still airing, with its most recent 30th season... 30 seasons? How? This is four years ago! He just made another video two month, two to three months ago. I mean, at this point, it's less that the show has to be good or not. It's more, it's an ast- They're all drinking of the cola instead of Duffet's Buzz. Yeah. Diet Lady Buzz. <sighs> Seeing the most iconic family of the 90s contorted and shoehorned into the topical issues of 2019. Marge enters a reality TV show, Homer gets a job in a self-driving car factory, and Bart becomes woke. I'm not even going to make the argument that these episodes are bad, just that they are not The Simpsons. And how could they be? The Simpsons is now over two decades removed from the- So, basically The Simpsons did what everyone else did. Instead of having everyone steal from The Simpsons, The Simpsons stole the basic premise from South Park. Because South Park is always, we're going to put out a bunch of random bullshit episodes, and then we'll choose something incredibly topical and just be horrible about it. So did I say Simpsons? I meant South Park. Unless I didn't. Honestly, at this point, I could go either way. But that's kind of the entire thing. And then The Simpsons did that with topical episodes? Huh. That just feels weird. The era, culture, and people that made the show what it was. Yep. And so it's left. Oh. Oh, this is weird looking. And I get that's intentional. Because they're basically doing the live action version here, but... Oh, that is weird. It is nothing but an imitation, with the TV ratings of this most recent 30th season hitting an all-time low. Damn! So, why is it still being made? Well, Longevity Top Tate released still in sells. February of 2012, and by October of the following year, EA made an announcement that the game had generated over... EA. You know, suddenly this makes a lot more sense. This makes unfortunate amounts of sense. ...$100 million in revenue. Yep. With that number spiking to $130 million just three months later. Granted, keep in mind, for anyone who knows gotcha numbers, this is a decade ago, as opposed to now, where things like Genshin Impact or Star Rail, which are owned by MiHoYo, bring in billions. So, these are respectable numbers, but a decade ago, these would be incredibly high numbers, especially. 
After which, EA grew suspiciously quiet about just how much their little portable gambling simulator was making. But Enough that they kind of redesigned their entire business model around it. Several thriving fan communities, and the fact that the game has released nine content updates in the first half of this year alone. Yeah, that's where the money is, so people go for it. There's a battle... They put Fortnite into a Simpsons social mobile gambling game. I, I do not know how that would work. It seems like it'd be stupid. I'm going to ignore the top left one because everything about that image hurts me. It's a pretty safe bet that Tapped Out is still making a lot of money. Yep. The Simpsons name is still lucrative, and what's more, despite the fact that season 30 was one of the lowest reviewed seasons in the show's history, viewership, it's still pulling in viewers by the millions. Inertia, man. You get into a habit, you watch it. It doesn't have to be good, it just has to be inoffensive enough that you're just okay with watching it because the good feeling comes in whether it's actually a good show or not. It's basically soul food, except for your eyes and admittedly still better than some of the trash that is on TV because there is a lot of stuff that it's just, you gotta go and ask why. But at least with this, when you ask why, it's The Simpsons. You don't really care, is my initial assumption. I am not the super fan. Also, what are the actual numbers? Okay, see, while this looks horrible, going down from an 8 to a 6, it's still... I mean, I don't think that's horrible, horrible. It's just bad by comparison. There's some shows where if you even watch it, I would think less of you as a human being. I'm not going to say which ones because someone will look it up. And I don't want to do that to someone even by accident. There are lines. If you don't cross them, but you know them. Seasons in the show's history, it's still pulling in viewers by the millions. And as long as that viewership remains higher than Fox's other shows and those profits stay consistent, Fox will keep syndicating the show and... I mean, that's basic business. It doesn't matter how big your audience is. If the people you keep at the end are the ones who will throw all the money at it, you cater to them. And if you lose two-thirds of your audience, but those two-thirds weren't throwing money, well, that sucks, but okay, sure. Keep giving us the people who actually care. It's the heavily invested fan that becomes a massive part of a franchise. And it's not just The Simpsons. You can see that in any thing that forms what kind of feels like a cult around it where it doesn't matter what the cult does we love it and this is kind of the exact same thing just a lot less disturbing but this is a super eye patchable video i'm sure we'll get there the simpsons will be trapped in its zombified money-making form and this unfortunately is the sad modern reality of the simpsons Friends, thank you for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video thing. and would like to help support this channel, okay, no, no. no oh, I actually thought I skipped ahead not by accident. The end of the video, and we all know it's <laughs> not. See, I thought I had actually skipped ahead and didn't notice for a second <laughs> because it did kind of feel like his intro and how he will conclude the video. There's this other side to The Simpsons in 2019. The fan content? One that is weird and fascinating and exists in a world entirely outside the scope of the show. And to really talk about it, we first need to cover the topic of... memes. Ah yes, memes, the DNA of the soul. I've never heard of them before, I am very new to this topic. Look, I swear to God, this is going somewhere. The term meme was originally coined by Richard Dawkins in his 1976 oh. book. Oh, he's actually bringing up the original origin of the word. Wow, most people don't do that. The selfish gene, which yeah. described memes as comparable to genes, except cultural instead of biological. A meme could be anything from a style of painting to a composition of a song to even an ideological standpoint. Honestly, this is actually something that holds true when you look at how thought progresses. You get one person who has an idea, they play off it, they bounce it around, they build on it. People follow that style because they gravitate into it, because they like how it's engaging, and then they see how it progresses, and thought becomes their own, and then they push on to the next group, and that's also how they change, because you see the progression of people interpreting what they think is an idea that they're engaging with. And it's kind of fascinating. I'm heavily oversimplifying it, but it's actually fascinating, and you can watch it happen 
with people saying the word bro. Initially, it was surfer dudes. Then people ironically saying surfer dudes make fun of surfer dudes. But then it became popular because they had done it so long that the idea of just saying bro became normal. And now it's going back to it being weird again. But you can see the progression of thought around something as it's being embraced, done for one reason, changed, changed again, discarded, and probably brought back in a few years. It's one of the words the reason cool is so weird because the meme of cool has always been, oh, that is relatively interesting and shows a distinct lack of care, but also at the same time is rather engaging and distinctive, but also somewhat confidence inducing. All of that is bullshit, but you can't say it's wrong because cool has that idea of there's like, dude, that is a cultural counteral fixture that looks impressive, but is also not too threatening that I don't actually want to engage with it. It sounds a lot less good than that. Any idea or concept that could be passed from one person to another, and just like but genes then would slightly. evolve and mutate yep. as they did. Absurdist and abstraction. And it was a beautiful concept before the internet ruined it, but what the- I'm going to heavily disagree with him on this one. I love the concept of memes and how people can just take an idea in a visual format and do it. It's basically exactly what we did before but on steroids, and sometimes it goes stupid. But it is a good way to get in a joke down oftentimes. So sometimes the joke has the personal thought of how a person perceives something, and that gets their thought over to someone else in a way that is humorous, so more easily to engage with. And that is part of the meme progression in the classical sense, and it fits in the new sense of, ah, stupid funny thing. Uh, but it, sorry, I, I, this kind of stuff, the sociological impacts are so much catnip to me right now. The internet did do was allow for now even yeah, the bird small app. niche ideas and to never travel great anything else. distances and find large audiences. Anything can now become a meme, a screen cap of Naruto, a yeah. poorly thought out raid. On and somehow it didn't actually go bad. Except for one idiot, but you know, they deserve that point. And the guy who did it started a foundation. I'm sure it fell apart at this point, but I haven't looked up, so I could be wrong. And honestly, generally, apparently there was a party at the nearby city for the people who did actually arrive, and it was pretty chill. And a few guys on camera who did the Naruto run, which props to them. That's funny. On an armed go And he's even showing himself using it. Why is it taking so long? Just disappearing. As a God. visual expression yeah. of embarrassments. With that meaning only evolving further as different people took the meme and changed disappearing back into what you're engaged with also you know i've said this a lot the last couple days there's videos i don't think is going to make me hungry because i'm like okay i can eat that without eating dinner or breakfast or lunch or whatever time it is and then i see it and there god the glistening cheese and the fries i wasn't hungry and now i can literally feel my stomach kicking me it's like <laughs> airier you thought wrong dumbass and it hurts this is Considering how often I see homemade food, it usually isn't appealing, but the god damn you, Super Eye Patch Wolf, you just had to choose those pictures. Changed it, whose use has become so widespread that it even made it back into the TV show itself. I've never What's done that. What's so curious about yeah. The Simpsons, however, is that the Homer Bush meme is not the only time this has happened. How many times? Not. Oh god, I recognize some of these. Some I don't, but also some of them I very do. The the bashing over the head where just two people want up being each other. I see that yeah, one pretty often. long shot. People have been taking The Simpsons and reappropriating them for decades, even long before the internet. The Simpsons having a rich history of... Imbecile, balding father, and just a head that's... Why? Merchandise. I'm sure someone but bought it. But what the internet did do was took that process and hypercharged it. Anyone can now make their own version of The Simpsons and upload it. Yeah. And in doing so, creating an entire cool. online subculture of people repurposing The Simpsons in strange and fascinating ways. And this, friends, is what I want to talk about today. So I just want to pull up. Undertale had a massive sprawling fandom that went absolutely crazy and did some things that I have never actually considered. Garfield did it for nearly as long and seemed to be even weirder. One was hypercharged because very dedicated people were involved, where one just had the inertia over decades of insanity. Simpsons have been around long enough that they have the decades of insanity, and the initial hyper-invested fervor that Undertale had. Is it going to be some kind of mix between the two of them? 
Yeah, probably from all the crazy reasons possible. Yeah. The bizarre world oh, of what The Simpsons has become on the internet. Whoa. And to start, I want to talk about a little blog called Scenic Simpsons. What? Scenic Simpsons is dedicated to capturing quiet, empty still shots from around Springfield. That's actually really kind of awesome. Sorry, I like quiet shots in like media, literature, music. Sometimes when you can achieve the effect, it's just something I personally enjoy. Not all the time, but you know, inclusion is nice. So having an entire blog of this, I might need to look this up. Which it does by screen grabbing moments from old Simpsons episodes and uploading them to Instagram. Most of these images Where there's don't no one there. feature Setting. any characters and focus on very minor environmental details. A fluorescent exit sign a still shot of Homer's hammock in the backyard, or a nearly empty break room at the nuclear power plants. And when you isolate these moments like this, something really interesting It becomes happens. a good style of art. The way we look at them changes. It makes you think about the town of Springfield in a way you never would from just watching an episode, and lets you appreciate the minimalistic and oddly surreal art style of the show. There's also this really somber... I just realized what this art style reminds me of, and I can't believe I'm going to make this comparison. JoJo Season 3. With Josuke. Unless I'm completely mistaken about the number, but yeah! Pretty sure that's Stardust Crusaders? No, no, it was a different one. I'm not the biggest JoJo fan, but I know that specific season because the art style went so crazy and so experimental and used purples and greens and blues and yellows and oranges in ways that do not normally occur or is the common choice. And it stood out so much. Not always in ways I like, but this is what it looked like to me. You know these locations. You've seen them dozens of times. But without the yellow pop of characters, they feel empty and cold, like something's missing creating this nearly surreal sense of loneliness yeah. and nostalgia. If that sounds niche, it really is. And yet, this account is followed by Damn. hundreds of thousands of people. Three times my channel. But where things start to get a little crazy... It gets crazier? Scenic Simpsons is just one of dozens of these accounts on what? Instagram. There's also Existential Simpsons, Surreal Simpsons, Psychedelic Simpsons, Open Mouth Simpsons, Squinty Eyed Simpsons, Worst Simpsons. What? Of course they exist. I shouldn't be surprised. It's the internet. We talked about one specific thing with a very niche interest. Of course there's going to be more people. I should not be surprised about this. And yet I really am. Although I think at least at this one, this one was intentionally horrible. So they got the right idea faces and you get the idea all of which capture moments from old simpsons episodes and re-upload them in ways that are funny and strange and weird but make more beautiful. sense in context as strange as simpsons instagram is this is just a fraction it gets of weirder. how weird and obsessive it gets weirder, and Mike, prevalent the simpsons has become on the internet there are other memes on an entirely different level what Take, for example, the phenomenon of steamed hams. Oh, this is where this originated. I don't know why, but for this, like a couple years, it was just steamed hams everywhere. People would see it in person. I had no idea why. This is the... It was so annoying. And it was every damn place. <sighs> In late 2017, something really strange started to happen. People started to take an old clip from The Simpsons and changing it. The clip was from season 7, episode 21, titled So it was a meme, and I got people making jokes about a meme about I never Springfield, saw. One of which told the tale of Principal Skinner having his boss, Super Nintendo Chalmers, over to his house for lunch only for Skinner to ruin that lunch and attempt to hide his mistake by passing off Krusty Burgers as his own patented family recipe, steamed hams. It's a classic Simpsons bit, the comedy of the scene coming from Skinner's increasingly ridiculous lies, coupled with Chalmers absurd willingness to believe those lies. Yes, I should be. Good Lord, what is happening in there? Aurora Borealis? Aurora Borealis. <laughs> at this time of year, at this time of day, in this part of the country, localized entirely within your kitchen. 
Yes. May I see it? No. But then, oh 14 God. years later, in the early 2010s, things start to get weird. Different. F yeah, this is going to hurt. Not because it's going to be unfunny, but because I am just going to get remembered annoyance to all the people doing this. I'm sorry. I don't know why it pissed me off so much. I am usually fine with memes. This is not one. I do not know why. Fan-made versions of steamed hams begin appearing online, the meme slowly gathering momentum before exploding in late 2017 when hundreds of versions of steamed hams begin to flood the internet. But these uploads were strange and different. Actually People seen the were now taking else. the entire scene and recreating it, either altering the events of the story through editing or reanimating the scene entirely in completely new mediums. You know, I thought this would be the disturbing one, and it is. But all the others just seem to do it more. There are so many of these videos. Steamed hams, but it's Minecraft. Steamed hams, but it's a dating sim. Steamed hams as a surreal 3D animation, or what? this? What? <laughs> oh no! Steamed clam melting Steamed ham. Were they saying steamed clams and said? I think they were. No, no. Okay, it's only doing that for his words, not anything else. Damn it. Um. Okay, sure. There's a musical remix. I was not expecting that, but I probably should have. It's weird enough. I feel like I know the bass music number. It's so familiar. There is always a Skinner. There is always a eh, Chalmers. Of there is nearly always a lie over a ruined roast, but everything else. Of course, they did traditional style. Wow. I was going to say Revengeance because I actually forgot Metal Gear Solid for a second. It was <sighs> valuable. But among the best of these videos, but it's something Undertale? really interesting starts to happen. What? And to talk about what, I want to discuss a little video called Steamed Hams, but it's edited in the style of Nier Automata. Nier Automata, if You know, I was expecting a lot, and I've been surprised a lot, and I shouldn't have been. But this one, I'm going to give myself a pass on, because there were two things I never thought would cross over. Steamed Hams, The Simpsons, and Near Automata. A game about existentialism and how it's all useless, followed by a beautiful ending where they're given a moment of change, and it's actually amazing, but you literally have to destroy your own save files to get it, and it's a brilliant game, and I... Did not expect this, please. There are so many jokes about Tubies, but there are nothing about them, and I want mixed over with Simpsons. It's going to be disturbing, isn't it? If you're unfamiliar, is a Japanese RPG slash character action game that has this distinct muted visual style and unusual approach to storytelling. Depression. Covering the same narrative from the perspective of its three different protagonists and encompassing themes like the futility of existence and the raw existential dread of just being Fun game, though. alive. It's not the kind of material that should mesh well with a 90s cartoon sitcom. Wait, it does mesh well? I'm sorry, I'm actually trying to wrap my head around this one right now, and I legitimately can't. They have so little in common. I thought the humor would be, it's so discordant, it's funny in its own right. But because he said it shouldn't make sense, that doesn't mesh well. He's either going to say, and it doesn't, or that it does. And either one on the extreme is interesting, but I'm more scared the second one is the truth. But something really special happens in this video. Like Nier, we're shown the events of the evening first from Chalmers' perspective and then Skinner's. But the video uses this shift in perspective to do something really interesting. What? An entirely new scene is added for oh. Skinner's trip to Krusty Burger. 
This is a moment that happens off camera in the original episode, but is now depicted with this near esque tech sequence as he narrates the, the hacking experience sequence of cover. standing under the fluorescent lights of the fast food restaurant and describes his growing anxiety over the evening as every second stretches on for an eternity, and even exploring the guilt he feels over lying to Chalmers, stating that he feels like he's being punished like he's trapped in his own personal purgatory. Yeah, that does track with the near side. And it's because they're going the stylistic choices in near, not the character overlays. That makes a lot more sense because someone re-editing Skinner to have cake, which I'm told is a reference to a large ass. I still don't get it either, but I'm sure someone in the comments will explain it to me and I'll not be able to look away the entire time I read that comment. Yeah, I was not expecting that. I'm kind of glad we're not getting that. I'm aware at this point I'm basically describing my emotional reaction to a Simpsons shitpost, and I could be alone But they put in that. thought into it, it looks like. But this new scene, combined with the addition of near somber music and muted oh, color palette, music too. had me feeling genuinely bad. Oh, okay, that's actually interesting. I didn't realize he wasn't toning down the color. I thought that's just him making a point by reducing the color spectrum. But if that's actually part of the original video, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. It does fit the tone better. Add for Skinner, making it apparent how much this evening meant to him, as well as his despair as it falls apart. It's less the comedy for us and more I'd understanding that this is personal hell to him. Or so times I'd watch that original episode. And I think this raises a really interesting idea and that is the potential for this kind of fan-made content to explore this world and these characters in a way that's not possible in the original show. The world of The Simpsons is one designed to reset every 22 minutes. Whatever happens over the course of an episode, there's a status quo that must be returned to by the end, and that's how the show is able to continue its infinitely repeatable cycle of episodes. Bar will forever be 10 years old. This is one of those things I'm not really sure about. Did they ever have any progression at all? Because I thought some characters did come and go because of random events that did carry through. Or, well, I thought that was the case. I could be completely mistaken. I haven't followed it nearly as much as I thought. Although I didn't realize it went for more than 30 seasons. Probably a 34. Someone's probably going to say 34. I know someone in the last video commented exactly how long it was there. And the number scared me and I repressed it. So I don't remember anymore. Old Homer will always return to his job at Sector 7G. And outside real life events, such as the deaths of the voice cast, the world of The Simpsons will remain frozen in time as it has done for 30 years with the stories of that world needing to remain palatable to a primetime audience. What this means is that there is a glass box surrounding these characters. There is only so much of them we can explore in a 22 minute repeatable episodic format. And this problem compounds with each new season as every possible character motivation and plot thread becomes exhausted to the point that these characters start to feel like parodies of themselves. And what I think special about fan-made contents like the Near Automata video is it breaks the characters free from that format. And now... Okay, that makes sense. So he's not saying that... Actually, no, let me rephrase this. He's saying that because the characters in the fan content are given a complete worldview of just this specific image, you can actually explore and enjoy them more because in the original content, it doesn't matter. You're reminded constantly, nothing matters. But when you get into the fan content, this is all there is for it. So it has all the immediacy of if you went into its own unique product. It's actually something similar you can see in Marvel adaptations where you have a one-shot storyline with a very solid beginning, middle, end, and then it's done. And that's it. You get the story. And they're, personal opinion, more powerful because of that. And then you go back to the Marvel canon timelines and... Enough said. Yeah. So any number of subjects can be explored, like the weird existentialism of being Seymour Skinner, but this would also never work or in the show itself. even letting these characters address their feelings of being trapped in an infinitely repeatable world. And it's here where I think some really powerful stories can be told, one in particular being the webcomic Marge Simpson anime. 
And that's where I'm going to have to cut this one because I did notice the time and I need to go a dog because my wife is outside the door. The kittens are starting to claw at it and I'm not sure how much of that actually came through on the mic, but it's noticeable and it's probably a good indication that I have taken too long doing this. So I, I need to go fix that for adulting reasons. And by adulting reasons, I mean bribing my wife with chocolate and cheese. Probably more cheese, actually. Cheese, yeah, definitely cheese. Lots of cheese. If I can find a really good mozzarella that's fresh and maybe some breadsticks specifically separate i might have a way out of this one but that's my own bitching aside this though i really like what's going on because i like seeing how the fan content he looks into has morphed around these entities that are just insane and while well, the beginning of it was just a really depressing hey the show sucks and it's just there to cause pain for the people who love it and by that i mean financial pain because we saw it's literally just a money grab yeah, just a reminder of the last video. You're just extending it out to make it completely aware it got worse. I'm so glad there's that third video in the series about how it got good again, and I'm hoping that title's not ironic, because if it's not, this is just a very depressing series of three videos designed just to say, hey, remember this awesome thing growing up? It sucks now! It's gone on so long that everything you loved is dead, and it just exists to torture you. Have fun. Yeah, that said, I do want to get into more of the fan content because while the initial show might have its issues, this though is really fascinating to see what people are making. I see why he's gravitating towards the people who aren't in the show itself because while it feels like, at least for him at this point, that is dead and tortured, the fan content is new and fresh and probably what's going to lead into the third video. If it's not just a switch for the title and it's just going to be more depression. It's a super high-patchable video that could do that. Unless it involves wrestling, in which case, maybe not. We'll find out. More importantly, you guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original video. Hit it up. I'll see you in the next one. Adios.